Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. PM Modi inaugurates India's first water metro launches infra projects. Explosions at Pakistani counter-terrorism ammunition store kill at least 16. And Mohammad Shahabuddin sworn in as Bangladesh's 22nd president. And now for all the details. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday inaugurated various infrastructure projects in Kerala, including the southern state's first One Day Bharat Express train and the country's first water metro. He also interacted with a group of school children inside one of the coaches of the semi-high-speed train, which will connect over 11 districts. Meanwhile, the first of its kind water metro will connect 10 islands around the Kochi city through battery-operated electric hybrid boats. It is expected to boost tourism and provide seamless connectivity in the port city. The Prime Minister also laid the foundation stone of a digital science park in Thiruvananthapuram. He said that India has demonstrated resilience despite a challenging global environment and the country is being seen as a vibrant spot of development. And India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar, who is on a two-day visit to Panama, took a veiled dig at Pakistan on Monday and said that it is very difficult to engage with a neighbor who practices cross-border terrorism against India. He stressed India has always said that they have to deliver on counter-terrorism commitments. The remarks came as Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari is set to visit India for the SEO meet in Goa. It will be the first visit by a Pakistani minister in over a decade. It is for us very difficult to engage with a neighbor uh, who practices cross-border terrorism uh, against us. Uh, we have always said that they have to deliver on their commitment uh, not to encourage, sponsor and carry out cross-border terrorism. We continue to hope that one day uh, we would uh, reach that stage. India last week witnessed a deadly terror attack in Poonch district of Jammu and Kashmir in which five Indian soldiers were killed. The involvement of a Pakistan-based terror group in the attack is likely to cloud Bhutto's visit. Well, two explosions in Pakistan's counter-terrorism department's ammunition depot in Swat Valley in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa killed at least 16 people and wounded over 50 on Monday night. Provincial police said that initial investigation suggests that ammunition caught fire, most probably due to an electric shot circuit. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Twitter earlier termed it a suicide attack, but immediately clarified the nature of the blast as being investigated. Pakistani police and military have got a significant presence of their counter-terrorism staff in the region, which was controlled by Islamist militants before they were flushed out in a military operation in 2009. <laughs> And consumers in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir are grappling with record high prices of fuel and gas due to rates set in Islamabad. The frequent surge and no standard pricing policy is also hurting businesses. A report. Gas distributors in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir are upset over frequent gas price hike, which is subsequently affecting their business with consumers unable to purchase at the rates set by Pakistani authorities. They have lamented there are no standing pricing policies in place amid the crisis. It is hard to buy gas at high cost and sell it while incurring losses. प्लांट वाले 3100 रेट दे रहे हैं हमें तो साथ कोई इनवाइस कोई चेट वगैरह कोई भी हमें दे नहीं रहे वो कह रहे हैं जिसको चाहिए वो ले लें जिसको नहीं चाहिए तो वो जब रेट कम होगा तो हम फिर उस पर आप رابطہ करेंगे तो फिर हम आपको देंगे जैसे कि प्राइस में फर्क आया 3200 का भी पीछे से मिल रहा है तो यहां पे रेट दिए हुए 2700 तो इस वजह से 
और दुकानों वाले गैस मंगाते ही नहीं हैं जिसकी वजह से ना तो ये हमारा ये गाड़ियाँ लगी हुई हैं मकम्मल हर से दस साल से ना इनका कोई कारोबार है और हर गाड़ी के साथ चार चार मजदूर हैं वो भी बेरोज़गार हुए हैं इस वजह से इंतजाम से हमारी जी गुजारिश है कि इसको ओगरा का रेट ख़त्म करके डी सी साहब के मतहत किया जाए Pakistan in recent months has been witnessing economic challenges owing to its incompetent policies. However, this occupied region which is already marginalized has borne the major brunt of unfair taxes and high inflation. The Taliban has denied the reports of classified Pentagon assessments stating that Afghanistan has become a significant coordinate site for the ISIS group that plans attacks in Europe and Asia and carries out aspirational plotting against the US. The head of the Taliban's Qatar-based political office, Suhail Shaheen, said that the report is not as per the ground realities in Afghanistan. Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid termed the assessment fake and part of an ongoing propaganda campaign against their government. He said that ISIS and other terrorist groups in the country have been severely affected and are in the process of being destroyed. The Taliban captured Kabul in August 2021 when the US and its NATO allies withdrew after two decades of war. Since then, Taliban has been battling the ISIS. And Mohammad Shahabuddin, a former judge and politician of the ruling Awami League, was sworn in as the 22nd president of Bangladesh on Monday, just months before a general election. 74-year-old Shahabuddin replaces Mohammad Abdul Hamid. The new president took part in 1971 Liberation War and was also imprisoned for waging protest after the 1975 assassination of Bangladesh's founder Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the father of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. The election comes as the country faces mounting protest over the next general election scheduled to be held later this year. The opposition has been demanding that PM Hasina to step down and a caretaker government to take charge. If she is forced to resign, the otherwise largely ceremonial presidential office could end up playing a bigger role. And the doors of the Kedarnath Temple in India were reopened for devotees on Tuesday. The portals of Kedarnath, one of the holiest hill shrines, are closed in winters for nearly six months due to heavy snowfall. Take a look. The doors of Kedarnath Temple in India's Uttarakhand state, one of the holiest hill shrines dedicated to the Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva, were reopened for devotees on Tuesday. The temple is closed in winters due to heavy snowfall in the region. Devotees stood in long queues, chanting prayers as they waited to offer prayers to Lord Shiva. To mark the auspicious occasion, the temple was decorated with nearly 20 quintals of flowers in the picturesque foreground of ice-capped Himalayan hills. Kedarnath is part of the popular pilgrimage route known as the Chota Chardham Yatra, covering Kedarnath, Badrinath, Gangotri and Yamunotri. The temple was one of the few structures to withstand the floods in 2013, Uttarakhand's worst in decades that killed at least 6,000 people. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. It's the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.